Hello everyone, myself Sabri and I welcome you to our channel Solution Bridge Network and one-stop solution for all your power platform tutorials. Hello everyone, in today's video we are going to understand how we can open a specific item in Power Apps by clicking the URL rather than just navigating the user to the app and asking them to navigate to the required sections. So the simple use case what I have taken here is an incident tracker where I have a gallery which displays all the list of incidents. I have a plus icon to add a new incident and when I click the plus icon this will be taken the user to the view data or the add data section and based on the plus and this edit the action of this form either will be converted to a new form or an edit form accordingly. So I do have a power automate flow at the back end. So whenever an item is created and saved to this incident tracker SharePoint, then it triggers an email to the user who is in this assigned to section what I have shown here. So this is the user who will be getting an email stating that a new incident is assigned and it just gives the incident ID and then it gives the access to this app. The link what I have configured here is the direct access to this app and not to the incident. So here we are going to configure something and whenever the user gets this email and he, if he clicks this link, this will automatically take the user to this page and presets this data to that selected incident ID. Let's see how we can achieve this in Power Apps. Today, we are going to understand a new function to solve this problem. The function is called as parameters. So we call it as P-A-R-A-M function. So the parameter function is used to retrieve a parameter passed to an app when it is launched. So if the name of the parameter was not found in that URL, then it will be returned as blank. And if you see the syntax, it's nothing but P-A-R-A-M of parameter name. So we need to make sure we pass the parameter name in double quotes. So there are certain keywords which we may not be able to use as parameters. These are called as reserved items. So these are the list of keywords. So I will be giving this parameter link in your description so that you can just go and check the further information available. So what we're gonna do here is, let me go back to the home page and in the apps on start property, I would like to start creating a variable. I call it as variable INC ID and I would like to have this as my parameter. So P-A-R-A-M on the double quotes I would like to say INC ID and close the parameter and then close the variable. So whenever the app starts it looks for this parameter name INC ID in the URL and if it has a value then it will assign it to the where incident ID. Whenever someone clicks the edit icon, you can see that the selected item gets created in form of a collection and then it is navigated to this view data page and the form mode is set to edit form. So we're gonna do the same process here. So first what we would like to do is, we would like to clear collect that selected item. I will call it as selected item. So what should be the selected item? Filter. The source name is incident tracker. And in the incident tracker, I would like to filter the ID is equal to VARINC ID. Let's close the filter and let's close the collection. You see here, there is a small scribble which says that incompatible type of comparison where number and text cannot be converted. So I would like to convert this again. So I would use the value function. So I will say value of this incident ID. Now, since we have collected this item, we need to make sure to set the display mode of the form to edit form. So I will say edit form of form one. So if you see here, go to the next page, I have the form name as form one. So I have made sure that whenever the on start property of the app runs, that is whenever the app opens for the first time or whenever the app gets reloaded, it goes and checks whether a parameter which is in the name INC ID is available in the link. If yes, it's gonna set it as this variable. And after that, it automatically do a clear collect and have this collection created that is selected item where the ID is equal to this variable. So whenever we are not able to see the parameter, it's mentioned here that this will return as blank. 
So this collection will also be returned blank. The reason being incident tracker will not have any blank IDs. And it automatically sets the form to edit form. That's okay because the user logs in here. If the user clicks on plus, it automatically resets the form to new form. And whenever someone clicks edit, this gets reset to edit form. The next step, what we need to do here is to make sure to navigate to that page whenever we have a parameter is available in the link. To achieve that, we need to use in another property which is called a start screen. So start screen defines the landing page of the screen whenever the app loads. So a small if condition again here, let's say if is blank of parameter, the parameter what I have created is INCID. This should be case sensitive. Make sure you write it in the same format. So whenever this is blank, then we will retain it in the home screen. Else we will move it to view data. So let's close this link. Let me publish this app first. So just to recap, whatever we have done here, on the on start property of the app, we are checking if the parameter incident ID is available on the link. If yes, it has been stored to a specific variable and we are clear collecting the selected item just to show that ID whatever passed in the incident ID. And next in start screen, if the parameter passed in is blank, then it will retain it in the home screen, else it will navigate to the view data. So let me publish this app and let me try to submit a new record. Say plus the issue is locked by let's say Alex Weber and I would like to call the issue as test one two three issue description. I'll give the same priorities high. Let me say it is a new and let me say it is assigned to me so that I will be getting the email and let's say submit. If you see here it says ID number seven is created and you can see the Alex Weber where the ID number seven is created of high priority of the issue test 123 it is assigned to me. Now we need to wait till this flow runs and we will get an email. So let me go one step back. Just do a refresh and see if I'm getting a trigger. You can see a trigger came in and it has succeeded. So if I go to my outlook, I will see a new incident logged. This will just take me to the app. So let me click this link and it will open the app in another page. So we would like to test the parameter directly in the link before we configure it to the Power Automate. So what I will do, I'll just look at the link. So it says app.powerapp.com play. This is a GUID ID and environment ID followed by a GUID ID for app and followed by the tenant ID. We have a hint followed by a source time. So let's say I would like to remove the source time and call the variable whatever we have created which is INC ID is equal to 7. So whenever we use this click on enter you will notice it automatically takes us to the page where we have entered the issue. So if this ID is not present let me cut the ID from here. Let me reload. If the app now loads, since the parameter is not available, it retains the user in the home screen. So we would like to add this link directly in the Power Automate so that whenever a new request is submitted and the user gets an email, then the user will be taken directly to the issue rather than to the home page of the app. So here, what we will do is we will pass the incident ID dynamic content. Let me correct the name here. It is incident and pass in the parameter of ID. This is a hyperlink whatever I have created using the HTML code. So let me go back to the code view. And if you see here, you have the HTML code and it ends here. So we will pass in that specific variable INCID is equal to a dynamic content in there which is the id so let me type an id and whatever getting generated from when an item is created let us go back to the app 
and start creating a new item and see how it works. So this item will have an ID of eight. So let me add a new item. Let's call the issue logged by admin demo. Issue is called as issue one. I will copy paste the same in the description followed by the priority and the status and let me say it is assigned to me. Let's submit. So now there should be an email getting triggered to my email ID and whenever we click that link, this should automatically take ourselves to the ID number eight. So let's wait for the flow to get run successfully and wait for an email. I could see I have an email now. Let me reload. So this is the email which says that a new incident is assigned to you and the incident type is eight. Whenever I click this link, this will open me a new tab. And if you see at the end, you see that incident ID is eight, which is in automatically passed. And we are already on the ID number eight where which was created by the demo user. If you check the URL, you will be able to find the parameter INC ID, which is equal to eight. It got automatically passed in as a dynamic content and the page, whatever is opened is of the ID eight and you, you can remember that the issue logged by admin user was of ID eight. By this, we come to end of this video. So in this video, we understood what is the parameter function and how we can use that parameter function inside the app to navigate the app to a different section automatically based on the click made by the user in the link. If you have any questions or comments, please post it in the comment section and we will be happy to help. Thanks for watching. Subscribe our channel, hit the like button and press the bell icon for our new video alerts.